Hi friends, happy Wednesday. Today is May 27th. It's Ethan's birthday today. And it's also day 70 of not seeing my kiddos. Although I did get to see some of you on Zoom today. Um, Madison, Mariah, Ethan for his birthday, Santana, Faith, Edwida, and Natalia popped in even though she was in the pool. <laughs> so it was good seeing Natalia too. All right, we are still reading um, Beverly Cleary's Ralph S. Mouse. We are on chapter three and it's called Erwin J. Sneed Elementary School. As Ryan hopped down the steps of the school bus, Ralph poked his nose out of his pocket and found himself in a crowd of children, all of them bundled up in hooded parkas or jackets and knit caps. Remember, it's winter time. Clouds of vapor came from their mouths as they shouted back and forth to one another. A tiny little cloud formed in front of Ralph's nose, too. So remember um, during wintertime when it's really cold, well, cold for us, and we have those little puffs of, looks like little clouds coming out of our mouth. Those are, that's called vapor. And here's Ralph with his little vapor cloud. And he's in um, Ryan's pocket in his jacket. A boy jumped out of a yellow tow truck and shouted, So long, Dad! Then, as the truck pulled away, he added, So long, Arfy, to the dog sitting next to the driver. Arf, answered the dog, who looked like a kindly wolf. That boy must be Brad, thought Ralph. As the children trampled snow on the playground on their way into the long, one-story building that was the Irwin J. Sneed Elementary School. Inside the building, the linoleum-floored hall, unlike the halls of a Mountain View Inn, was a broad, smooth highway with no rough carpets to wear down the already thin tires of a little motorcycle. Ralph wondered how he could endure a whole day of waiting for night to come so he could race down that long hall. There would be no furniture to get in his way and no little relatives to make him feel guilty for not sharing his motorcycle. That hall was the perfect race course Ralph had dreamed about ever since he had owned a motorcycle. With no one around to see him take spills, he could even rear back on one wheel to practice wheelies. Ryan entered room five, a room different from any room Ralph had ever seen. Unlike the rooms at the inn, this one was furnished with many chairs and tables instead of beds. At the front, seated at a desk, was a woman Ralph knew must be Miss Kay. Her toothpaste, nowhere in sight. <laughs> at the rear of the room, Ralph Nope, I knew I was going to mess that up. Ryan hung his backpack on a hook. Then he removed his parka and hung it on the hook too. Hey, don't leave me here all by myself, squeaked Ralph, alarmed at being alone in such a strange place. Take me with you. Promise you'll stay out of sight, whispered Ryan out of the corner of his mouth. Sure, agreed Ralph. <laughs> Ryan started to poke Ralph into the pocket of his jeans until Ralph objected. Hey, not here. This place is too tight. You'll squash me when you sit down. Sorry, said Ryan, and he dropped Ralph into the breast pocket of his plaid flannel shirt. No sooner had Ryan sat down at the table than he and the rest of room five stood up again to recite some words about a flag and something about liberty and justice for all. I bet you guys know what that is. Whatever it was, Ralph hoped mice were included. Ryan sat down and began to shuffle books and papers while Miss Kay talked about numbers. Ralph tried to listen above the steady lubbub, lubbub of Ryan's heart, but soon he grew bored. Hmm. Ryan's shirt was new and the flannel was still fuzzy. Ralph nipped a little hole in the pocket, in the front of the pocket for a better view, and then, lulled by the muffled lubbub, lubbub, and the steady rise and fall of Ryan's chest, he fell asleep. <laughs> as if he were being rocked in a cradle. And here is a picture of the classroom. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> because a heart does not strike the hours like a clock, Ralph slept until recess. And again, until lunchtime. You know what, that wouldn't be that bad, would it? <laughs> when Ryan remembered to slip a bit of sandwich into the pocket, for his lunch. Sometime in the afternoon, Ralph awoke feeling hot, cramped, and restless. Maybe no one would notice if a small brown mouse poked his nose out for a breath of fresh air. After a few whiffs, Ralph stuck his head out all the way to see what was going on. All heads, except for one, were bent over papers on the tables. 
One girl was chewing her pencil and staring into space. That's funny, thought Ralph. I didn't know people nod on things too. Unexpectedly, the girl turned her head and looked straight at Ralph. Then she tapped another girl on the shoulder and pointed. Too late, Ralph ducked back into the pocket. He heard the girls whispering and soon others were whispering too. Uh-oh, thought Ralph, feeling both guilty and doomed. He had broken his promise to stay out of sight. He was in trouble. Miss K spoke. Melissa, is something disturbing you? She asked. Melissa, thought Ralph. Oh, that's the girl whose boot I'm supposed to live in. Not exactly, Miss K, answered Melissa. There seems to be something going on that I don't know about, said Miss K. Won't someone let me in on it? I, um, I thought I saw something move in Ryan's pocket, admitted Melissa. And here is the picture of her noticing. If you can see Ralph right there. <laughs> Ryan, do you have something you wish to share with the class? Asked Miss Kay. Ralph squeezed himself into a corner of the pocket as Ryan's heart began to beat faster or rev up as Ralph thought about it. No, not exactly, Ryan told his teacher. The class began to speak. Yes, he does. He does too. I saw something. It moved. Ralph dug his claws into the flannel shirt as Miss Kay said, Ryan, why don't you come to the front of the room and let us see what it is? Oh, how embarrassing, huh? Right, uh, Ralph, this is the second time I've done that in one reading, started to chew through the side of the pocket closest to the heartbeat because he's trying to get away. As Ryan walked to the front of the room, he reached into his pocket, grasped Ralph by the tail, and dragged him, clawing and struggling, out of the pocket. <gasps> Ralph was so angry at this treatment, he was squeakless. When Ryan set him on the palm of his hand, he turned his back to the class and sat quivering with rage and terror. Oh, what a beautiful mouse, said Miss K, who was young and enthusiastic and eager to give her students learning experiences. Class, gather around for a better look. I'm beautiful, thought Ralph. No adult or child, for that matter, had ever described him as beautiful. Far from it. Oh, look at his perfect little paws, said Miss K. Ralph looked too, hmm. as the class left their seats to crowd around. His paws looked like ordinary mouse paws to him, but now that she mentioned it, hmm, maybe. Oh, and his lovely little ears, continued Miss K. Aww, breathed the children. He's cute. He's really neat. He's darling. Well, what do you know? Ralph perked up and stopped quaking shyly. He turned to face the class. One member of room five, however, did not admire Ralph. He's just your standard brown mouse, said Brad. There's plenty more like him. Where did you get your mouse, Ryan? Asked Miss Kay. At the hotel where I live, explained Ryan. He's a very smart mouse. His name is Ralph. What's his last name, someone asked. Mouse, answered Ryan. His name is Ralph S. Mouse. The S stands for smart. May I hold Ralph? Asked Miss K, and Ralph found himself transferred to a much softer, cleaner hand. <laughs> he sat up and began to groom his whiskers, always a good performance. He could see that Ryan was happy to receive, be receiving so much attention from his classmates. Aww, breathed the class again. Look at him, he washes like a little cat. Such a tiny scrap of life, said Miss K. He's a little miracle. Ralph stopped wiping his paws over his whiskers to look with love at Ryan's teacher. Her long, shiny hair fell over her shoulders. It looked so strong that Ralph was sure that just one of her hairs would be perfect for tying his exhaust pipes in place. Perhaps the custodian has a cage we could keep him in, said Miss K. Love uh, turned to distrust. This wonderful woman with useful hair was turning out to be like any other grown-up. Ryan spoke up. I don't think Ralph would be happy in a cage, he told his teacher. I'll just, I'll just keep him in my pocket if that's all right with you. Good old Ryan. Miss Kay gently handed Ralph back to Ryan, who stuffed him into a shirt pocket. 
Thank you for sharing, Ralph, she said, above the lubbub of Ryan's heart, now steady as a well-oiled motor. Class, how would you like to draw pictures and write stories and poems about mice? Friday afternoon, we could have a mouse exhibit to show off our work. Ryan, you could bring Ralph to school again so he could be our guest of honor. Miss Kay, who had no idea Ralph was planning to live at school, was a teacher who could turn anything into a project. Most of the class was enthusiastic, yeah. Others thought mice were as good a subject as any for drawing and writing. A boy named Gordon said he didn't like to do any of those things. Miss Kay suggested he go to the library, look up facts about mice, and write an essay about them. And, what do you want to do, Ryan? she asked. I'd like to tell how smart Ralph is. Ryan's answer threw Ralph into a fright. What was Ryan going to tell his classmates about the motorcycle? Ralph would not ride his precious motorcycle in front of everyone. Splendid, Ryan, said Miss Kay, but why not show us how smart he is? Do you know what a maze is? Sort of, said Ryan. I've seen them on the kids' page of the Sunday paper. You take a pencil and you try to draw a line through the open spaces of a diagram from one side to the other. It isn't easy, but there are a lot of dead ends. Oh, because there are a lot of dead ends. That's right, said Miss Kay, who was drawing a maze on the blackboard as Ryan spoke. Scientists use mazes with walls to test the speed with, with which mice learn. They start a mouse at one end and they time him to see how fast he reaches food at the other end. Then they have him go do it again. And if he cuts down his time, like going faster, they know he has learned from the experience. Do you think you could build a maze? And here's the maze that she drew on the board. Oh, I hit my table. Ouch. Um, I'd like to try, Ryan answered. Good, said Miss Kay. I'll bring a stopwatch for timing Ralph's race through the maze. I can bring my cat pistol for a starter's gun, volunteered Brad, showing interest for the first time. Good idea, said Miss Kay. You like to build things, so perhaps you could help Ryan with build his maze. Um, by the way, I don't know why she would say that was a good idea to bring a cat pistol to school. Yeah, no. The boys eyed one another as if they were not sure how a partnership would work out. Um, okay, agreed Brad. So it happened that Ralph was not only a learning experience for room five, he was to have a learning experience of his own. He was not sure he liked the idea, especially that part about the starter's gun. What if he couldn't run through the maze faster the second time? What if he couldn't find the food the first time? What if he turned out to be dumb? Of course, I'm not dumb, thought Ralph, as he tried to make himself comfortable in Ryan's pocket once more. I can ride a motorcycle, can't I? He began to have doubts again, and doubt turned to anger. His intelligence, or not so much, was nobody's business but his own. When the last bell rang and Ryan went to the back of the room to collect his parka, Ralph poked his nose out of the shirt pocket. I'm not going to do it, he squeaked at Ryan. I'm not going to run any maze just because you say so. Sure you are, said Ryan out of the corner of his mouth, so nobody would notice he was talking to Ralph. I'm new in this school. Nobody paid any attention to me until I pulled you out of my pocket. You have to run the maze. Ralph became stubborn. No, I don't, and you can't make me. <laughs> Ryan ignored this remark. Do you want to change your mind about staying here? You can go back to the end with me. I'll stay here, answered Ralph, thinking of that long, smooth hall waiting for his motorcycle. I can't let Matt lose his job. Ryan looked around to make sure nobody was watching before lifting Ralph out of his pocket and placing him into the overturned boot. So long. See you tomorrow, he said. Who are you talking to? A boy asked. Me? <laughs> Ryan was all innocence. Nobody. I'm just practicing to be a ventriloquist. I'm working up an act. Yeah, some act, remarked the boy. And here, by the way, is Ralph inside that boot. And there's Ryan taken off. Ryan held up one hand and waggled his fingers as if he were working a puppet's mouth. What did one dandelion say to another dandelion? He asked in a squeaky voice without moving his lips. I don't know, he said in a normal voice. And then he answered, take me to your weeder. <laughs> All this nonsense made Ralph frantic. Hey, give me my motorcycle, he ordered as soon as the other boy had gone. Ralph tried to speak without moving his lips. I said Ralph, didn't I? Ryan, sorry, see, that's the third time in one recording. 
Ryan tried to speak without moving his lips. And have you writing all over school? Not a chance. You would get lost or get into trouble or someone would see you. It's my motorcycle, squeaked Ralph at the top of his lungs. You give it to me now. Ryan was the last one to leave the room. We'll see about that, he said as he bent over to speak to Ralph after you run the maze on Friday. With that ultimatum, he snatched his backpack off the hook and hurried away to catch the bus that would take him back up the mountain to the hotel. <gasps> Ralph was so angry, he sank his teeth into Melissa, Melissa's boot. <clears throat> Ugh! It had a really nasty taste, half rubber, half dust. And he thought Ryan was his friend. Well, not anymore. He was mean. He wasn't fair. Ralph felt terrible, but he was not going to run that maze in front of room five. Ryan couldn't make him. Maybe he would even hide and refuse to be the guest of honor. Ryan would learn not to try to order him around. Ralph sat in Melissa's boot and he sulked. Without his motorcycle, he felt mad at the whole world. Of course he was a smart mouse. Why should he have to prove it? Ryan felt, oh, I did it again, four times I wanted to read it. Ralph felt as if nothing was fair and nobody loved him. Poor dude. Chapter four is life at school, which we haven't seen in a long time, 70 days. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Have an awesome afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow on Zoom. Not Zoom, I lied. YouTube, <laughs> sorry. Bye, have a good afternoon.